So, Denis Villeneuve's Dune. It's on the move, ladies and gents. It's on the move. It's being delayed. Nothing actually massively like worrying about this, to be fair. Um, it is interesting how the Hollywood trades label this a Warner Brothers movie. Uh, they just distribute it. It's actually a legendary movie. Um, or legend, yeah, le legendary sort of co-financed it 75% and then Warner Brothers did 25%. Um, but it always fascinates me why that is the uh, the thing here. So, we had this, courtesy of The Hollywood Reporter. And this is what I'm referring to. Several Warner Brothers titles are on the move. And there are some other ones which they they make a point of here. Because uh, Denis Villeneuve's Dune moving is not actually a big deal. Like, it's it's barely it's barely a change. Like, it's, it's really not that bad. It's three weeks, right? But it's what it then lines up against. So we're going to look at this now, sort of objectively, and see whether anything's going to, I guess, potentially hinder it, right? So June will move from October 1st to October 22nd. Available day and date on HBO Max and in theatres, also in 3D and IMAX formats. Now, insiders say, this is courtesy of The Hollywood Reporter, that the move... Uh, was prompted by the desire to give the film more distance from James Bond, No Time to Die, which opens October 8th. That's a good move, actually. But then they also say that the sci-fi film, June, will take over the date previously held by Clint Eastwood's latest cry, Macho, uh, which will move to September 17th. Also, uh, part of the shuffle is Soprano's prequel, The Many Saints of Newark, which will move back a week to October 1st. But it's not just that, because now, ladies and gents, uh, we have this movie, June, uh, opening up the same date as Last Night in Soho and The French uh, Dispatch, which is also starring the lead guy here, uh, Timothy Chalamet. So let's look at this kind of like objectively, I guess. Like, this movie here, this, this move here, right? Moving... To avoid no time to die. They're two massive tentpole properties. I guess you could call it. Like, June's a huge property with the potential to be massive. I don't know whether this film will be massive. I hope it does, because I really like... I like the concept of June. I think June's fantastic. I think great story. In inspiration behind Star Wars, you know? Like, it's a great story. Inspired a lot of modern greats. <sighs> James Bond. No Time to Die. I don't know whether there's that much hype. I don't know. James Bond No Time to Die is an interesting one. I don't know whether there's that much hype for that film to warrant moving June. I think June is obscure enough to not require getting out of No Time to Die's way because there's not really that many people going to watch No Time to Die or June. In that respect, right? Like, people will watch a James Bond film because they're like, oh yeah, James Bond. But this one's been marred by some very strange comments made by cast and crew. Oh, we can't call them Bond girls anymore. That's sexist. And like, I mean, that's just utter, what utter drivel is that? Um, well, that's just such nonsense. We can't call them Bond girls. That's sexist. You raging misogynist. Like, shut up. Um, such a strange comment to make. And, and that's what I mean. James Bond, this current iteration has been just torn through uh, the masses here, and especially on YouTube. Um, I don't know whether it's going to have as mass wide appeal as they're hoping, or as indeed it should have, because I think No Time to Die will still be a very, very good film. I just think, stupidly, people have thought, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll say all of this stuff and that will get people in. No, it doesn't do that. That's not how it works. People don't care. People are not interested. People don't care about your, you know, your, your sort of virtue signaling situation there. Um, but June is an interesting one. I don't know whether that will have as many uh, bums on seats as uh, Legendary is expecting. And I really want it to. So in terms of it moving out the way of James Bond, I don't think it needed to. I think it's uh, its own sort of remit there to allow itself to be just released as is, uh, personally. Now, because it has moved, and, you know, my... My personal opinion is that I don't think James Bond would have impacted it at all. I genuinely don't. I think people are 
ready enough now to go back to the theatres. A lot of people disagree, but actually the, the the monetary value of certain films currently does speak, um, in, in, my, in my opinion's favour anyway. So I do think that people would have just gone to see two big tentpole properties if they wanted to. More than happy to. Now moving it back an extra week, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, I don't know whether that will then still hinder it if James Bond is doing well. Maybe, but I still think they're separate enough. Now the other thing here, though is that they've moved it to release on the same date as Last Night in Soho. And we'll get to the French Dispatch in a minute. Because there's another element which a lot of people are not uh, thinking about when they think of June and its mass appeal. And that is paired with the French Dispatch. But Last Night in Soho, Edgar Wright, never underestimate Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright is a man that does actually get people still involved in the cinema. People want to see what Edgar Wright is doing. Because he's... He's sort of obscure enough where, you know, you, you've seen his films, you like his films, you see an advert, you go from the makers of, and you go, oh, I like that film. I, I think Last Night in Soho, especially with uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, right? Because that's the other, that's the other um, thing to consider here is she's gone from, like, here in terms of popularity to way up here recently, massively so. So I do actually think that Last Night in Soho might be the reason... Or might be the hindrance, right? So I think that's a bad move. Secondly, secondly, ladies and gents, never underestimate Timothy Chalamet and his appeal to uh, the younger female audience. I say younger. I mean, obviously younger than me. I've got grey in my beard. Well, white in my beard. Um, never underestimate uh, a young dude's appeal to younger women. But the problem is, is that the French Dispatch also has Chalamet. So I don't know how much... Uh, and, and again, like I could, be, I could be way off the mark here. But I do absolutely believe that there are, you know, there's little fan bases for um, these individuals. And I do believe Chalamet has a pretty big fan base. And I think people would be going to watch him in this because they are that way inclined, uh, just as is. But I think that will be a hindrance uh, to the film as well. Uh, unfortunately, which is, you know, not any, not, not a hugely good thing, um, because I think you've got two, two elements there. Last night in Soho, people will want to go watch that. I, I genuinely think studios are sleeping on that film. People will want to go and watch that. Edgar Wright, Anya Taylor Joy, yeah, I'll go and watch that opening night. Of course I will. But now I've got to pick. Which one am I going to pick? You know, me as obviously a movie reviewer, I'm probably going to have to see both in the same day. But there you go. As the norm, normie audience, what would you pick? You know? And that's what I would say down below in the description box. Let me know. Uh, down below in the comments. Now, I know a lot of people are coming here for June news. So, they'll probably just pick June. But it is important to uh, recognise those things. So, it's not a massive problem. It's not delayed for any, like, you know, because oh, of this, that. And it's, just, it's just, they're just shuffling it around. It's not a big deal. But I do think that this could potentially hinder it. I don't know whether it's a, a particularly great move. I don't think No Time to Die would have heard it that much. So anyway, let me know what you think down below. Cheers, guys. Take care.